Showrunners, welcome back to Chasing Gold Bandera Edition. Giddy up. We are heading to Texas for the Bandera 100K. Chatting with the top athletes looking to get themselves one of the golden tickets into the 2023 Western States Endurance Run. Today on the show, we welcome Chris Myers. Chris runs with Solomon and CL Athletics, also part of the Swap Racing Team. Chris has got some big wins at the McDowell Mountain 50K, the Black Canyon 60K. He's got great performances out at Way Too Cool, including a 321 50K there. Recently, fourth at Broken Arrow 46K. Chris Myers, welcome to the show. Before we go any farther, I have a very important question coming from your fan club. They heard you were going to be on the show. The Chris Myers fan club are dying to know, are you going with the backwards baseball hat or the bucket hat on race day? I don't know. I don't know if I want to spoil it. It might be oh. a mixture of both. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe right. an incognito switch <laughs> in the middle. All right, the fan club's going to have to watch the live stream for this. Cool. Chris, let's rewind a little bit. You were just out in the desert. McDowell Mountain 50K. Holy smokes, I got to witness this one firsthand where Chris took down a long standard 50K course record that was held by Rob Carr. An unbelievable performance. Chris, how are you feeling after that performance? And talk to us about what the trainings looked like recently. Um, I don't know. I, I had a good race. It felt really good, really, uh, really fun just to move and be able to move for that long. Uh, I mean, 50K is not that long if you really consider the ultra distance. So I'm going to try and do a 100K. It'll be my first. So my trail's been a bit, or my, my running has been a bit more high volume lately. And I'm kind of more or less doing similar taper plan uh, for the 100K. But yeah, that, that's about it. I feel fine, and I'm ready to destroy my body. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, you mentioned it will be your longest run to date. You did run the Black Canyon 60K, so a little bit further than the 50. This is jumping up to 100K. Uh, sounds like training. You're doing the right thing. Running more, that's important. What about race day strategy i'm sure you and david and the team have talked about this how does the fueling strategy look different going into the 100k as opposed to the 50k um it's relatively similar because i already eat a lot when i run 50ks usually about like 150 180 calories every half hour with sports drink depending on you know what's available some like salt here and there because i i've had in the past some cramps but i think just you know keeping an eye on the nutrition making sure it's dialed in is is going to be key i mean there's there's a lot to be learned and hopefully i don't learn any super hard lessons on the day of but <laughs> the, the plan is hydrate eat stay uh stay salty sure and obviously you are coming into this in my opinion certainly with as one of the fastest athletes and like you said it is there's always a big learning curve when you jump up in distance is there anything that you are preparing for mentally or are you telling yourself hey you really got to go slow at the beginning this is a long way to go like how are you approaching that from a mental and strategic standpoint um the way I think it's going to be is it's going to be below aerobic threshold for pretty much all of it. And it's going to be like moderate until it gets hard just from the strain of the day. So just just staying relaxed, making sure I'm not rushing too much and believing that I've got plenty of time to make up time if I need to, you know, stop, use the bathroom, drink some more, eat some more at an aid station. I guess staying relaxed because it's, it's, I mean, 100K is bit of a jump up <laughs> from 50 so yeah. yeah yeah it is it's a really long way to go and it's a great approach something i do in my own racing and always advising people it is so far to go it doesn't matter what happens at the beginning because there's so much time to make it up if you feel good so i'm happy to hear that happy to hear you have a good good strategy going into it talking about the race obviously 
right? It's just one punchy climb after another, and that goes on for 62 miles or so. No, no huge climbs, no huge descents. So I think it takes a very intuitive athlete to run this race well because they need to be able to run the, down, the short downhills well and then ease up a little bit on the short uphill and then run the downhills well. That kind of stuff, do you feel like that plays to your strengths? Do you train on these roller coaster type courses? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I grew up in the, the desert kind of northeast of LA and a lot of that was, I mean, McDowell felt very at home for me. So I like running on rocky technical trails and <clears throat> I guess I've done a lot of just really big climbs, but I think I, I do okay on the, the punchy stuff. But yeah, I feel like, you know, a rolling desert, desert-esque race is kind of what I've uh, always been doing. Sure. Excited. Race day generally brings a big variable when it comes to temperature at Bandera. Last year, it was super foggy and wet. This year, we are looking at dry conditions all week and then maybe 70s on race day. How does that stack up temperature-wise to where you are living? And where are you living? I live in Southern California. I'm in the uh, Hollywood area, so it'll be kind of uh, – we don't really get winter here. so. <laughs> oh, you're ready then. You yeah, are ready. And you... if it gets hot, maybe the bucket hat will come out. <laughs> Nice. And are you heading down to Texas with crew? Or are you heading solo? I am heading solo with maybe maybe some kind people want to will be there to help me out. But sure. it's going to kind of be my own adventure. And how do you plan on attacking the day? Are you someone that's going to run with the lead pack? Are you just going to do your own thing no matter where that puts you? How do you plan on taking those first few miles out the gate? I mean... I don't, I don't see there being much of a benefit to take it too, too easy in the beginning. It's good to be competitive, and I think learning how to race the race and the distance is being competitive to a certain degree. And, you know, not splitting like a 420, 50k <laughs> in the beginning, and then trying to negative split. I think that's, I mean, there's plenty of time to make up time in the second half, etc. But I don't think it's uh, necessarily the smartest move just to take it too easy. So sure. I think I, I would like to be a little competitive in the beginning and, you know, run with friends. Sure, sure. Yeah, I think you had alluded earlier, you know, keeping intensity b below aerobic threshold. And I know it's easy when we look at we look at the metrics, right? Keep it below aerobic threshold. One thing I always advise athletes is it doesn't matter if you're a, below aerobic threshold, if you cannot keep up with the fluids and hydration. I find this to be a bigger challenge than many athletes are prepared to do, and they're just looking at that aerobic threshold piece. I know you said you're taking calories from the bottle, which is going to be helpful. 70 degrees which usually means that's pretty good. If it's colder, athletes can have some trouble getting enough calories from the bottle because they're not drinking as much. Are you also adding in real fuels, gels, that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah, I'll be doing gels every half hour or so, okay. and then, you know, washing it down with uh, gotcha. liquid hydrogen. Yeah. Gotcha. Calories. Gotcha. And as you know, this is a two looper, two loops mm -hmm. of 50K, which to me is so exciting because the athletes can look at how they did on loop one versus loop two and really dive into some of that. A lot of your competitors are coming with some Bandera background. They've ran on the course and you haven't. What is yeah. what would your ideal approach be on this two looper? Would they be even splits? Would they be slightly quicker at the on the finishing uh, lap? How would that on an ideal world look to you? I mean, I've done a few two looper races, none this long, obviously, but I've I've always found my my best performances are just getting as close as I can to my my first loop. I know it's always going to be slower, but trying to keep it as consistent as possible has always uh, always as in like three times worked out fairly well. <laughs> sure, sure. All right, let's get intimate on this one. What things got you nervous about making this big of a jump on this big of a stage? Anything in particular? I know the volume of pure 62 miles is a long way and can be daunting. Is there anything else that you're thinking like, oh, man, I'm nervous about this or I really got to pay attention to this? Uh, I just hope I don't get cramps because uh, when I did Mammoth Trail Fest, I, I got sick like a week and a half out and 
I just kind of wasn't ready for it. And then I got like cramps at mile 15 and just like mm. battled through them the last 16. Um, I'm just hoping that doesn't happen. I'm not super worried that, but that is kind of like a bad scenario, but Shh. we'll tough it out. Sure, the, the, the adage or saying in our sport goes, it, all, it doesn't always get worse. So there could be those low moments, especially when you jump to bigger distances. It's, it's the magic of these bigger distances where things might feel awful early in the race, but there's so much race and there's so much time for them to feel better. So remember that if you start cramping, it doesn't always get worse. It's going to get yeah. better. <laughs> uh, all right, Chris. So you're going to head down there. You're going to, you're going to Bandera. You're hoping... Hopefully, you're going to get you that golden ticket. You'd be making the jump up to 100 miles. That would be an exciting, very exciting year. If you don't get it at Bandera, do you have any interest of running another golden ticket race this season? Um, possibly. I, I mean, the golden ticket is, is, you know, it's an enticing goal. But I guess experience is my main goal. And if a golden ticket is in the cards, cool. Uh, if not, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I do, depending on how I feel after Bandera, would consider doing Black Canyon, maybe at least the 60K. Um, but I, 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 at this point in time, it's really going to have to be a call after Bandera. Sure. So I'm not sure, but maybe. Who knows? Fair enough. Chris, we are going to dive into the 10 question, fast pace, fart lick round. I got to know, are you ready for this? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. Question number one. What sneakers will you be wearing at the Bandera 100K? <clears throat> Probably the Salmon uh, Ultra 3s, the S-Lab ones. Great, um, and great maybe shoes. I'll switch shoes along with the hat. Oh, you know? wow. Whole wardrobe <laughs> change. We might not even recognize them on loop two in the, on, the, on the live stream. He could be wearing a completely different outfit. All right. How about favorite local trail and why? Oh gosh, I like Backbone Trail out in the Santa Monica Mountains. I mean, it's like 67 miles, so maybe not the whole thing, but just <laughs> there's some really good sections of it near Topanga State Park. Absolutely. Topanga, beautiful area. How about race superstitions? What do you got? Do you got any? Um, I did really well eating a piece of pie <laughs> before <laughs> McDowell. <laughs> Like a piece of berry pie, so maybe that's my that's my my thing now. Yes, hundred percent. Bring back the pie at Bandera. Why not? Let's do it. All right, we just had New Year's. How about New Year's resolution? Did you have any? Do you have any? Ooh, right off the bat. Um, <laughs> I guess uh, maybe uh, race more competitively because last year was my biggest year in racing. I did like seven or so long races. Uh, if I'm doing longer, long races, maybe not seven, but, you know, just uh, perform well, have a good time, have fun, All right. see what I can accomplish. We would love to see it. You are a rising star in our sport. All right. Texas has a saying, don't mess with Texas. I want you to finish this sentence. Don't mess with uh, beef stew. <laughs> uh, I had a bad experience with peace doing time before a race. <laughs> uh, our, last, uh, our last interviewee said, don't mess with her beef jerky. So I like where this is going. Beef it's bringing us right into the pre-race breakfast, with, which could be a piece of pie. But what about a pre-race breakfast? What are you going with? Uh, maybe a piece of pie, some <laughs> berries. Uh, well, definitely a piece of pie now. Uh, I don't know. I, like, I mean, I used to do Costco muffins because those really pack a punch. <laughs> <laughs> Love I it. I guess pastries. Pastries are my, are my thing. Yeah, I'm definitely hearing pastries on, on race morning from you. That's me mm -hmm. too. I'm the same. I'm a pastry guy. All right. You get the choice to pick the song that starts the Bandera 100K. Chris Myers, what is the walkout song going to be? Uh, God, I forgot the name. It's like I'd walk 500 miles. Yep. I know that one. <laughs> We'll give it to you. Coming out with another Texas question. They say everything is bigger in Texas. When you get down to Texas, what one Texan item do you hope is actually bigger? Mm. The pastries. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. The pastries. <laughs> um, hopefully, uh, 
<laughs> I don't know. I don't know. What do, what do I want bigger before a race? I, I do eat a lot, so the portions would be really good. So that falls right. into the pastry category. <laughs> All right. All right, number nine, secret weapon on race day. What do you got? You got some shades. You got a drink that you're going to take at mile 40. That's going to be your secret weapon. What do you got for us? Might have to be the bucket hat. The bucket hat. On loop two, when he changes to the bucket hat, everyone, forget it. Lights out. Everyone's racing for second after that. All right. Toughest question of the day. Here we go. Drum roll, please. Chris Myers, what place are you finishing the Bandera 100K in? Uh, do I give a range or you want a specific place? Whatever you want to give us. Let's just say it's top five. Third would be really cool. Top five. Third will be cool. Second will be a little cooler. Yeah, I mean, it gets, <laughs> it gets cooler as you go, but yeah. we'll see how cool I am on that day. Maybe uh, I won't hit anything. <laughs> All right, Chris, we are going to see you, your baseball hat, and your bucket hat down at Bandera. Good luck out there. Thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Absolutely.